NCR Corporation is a leader in omnichannel solutions, turning everyday interactions with businesses into exceptional experiences. With its software, hardware, and portfolio of services, NCR enables nearly 700 million transactions daily across financial, retail, hospitality, travel, telecom, and technology industries. NCR solutions run the everyday transactions that make your life easier. NCR is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, with about 30,000 employees and does business in 180 countries. Good morning, how are you all doing? Good. Thank you so much, Mila, for that and the wonderful introduction. And thank you all for coming to my talk and to the conference organizers for having me. So like she said, I'm a biologist, uh, specifically a cell biologist. And what that means is I study the fundamental unit of life the cell. As all you all have probably learned multiple times in your class, the cell or any living organism is either made of cells or is a cell itself. But um, what I want to start with real quick is just a, uh, give you perspective about cells and just the abundance and quality and things that you can do. So as a graduate student, a lot of my research focused on studying cells and how they interact with the body and how they interact with certain disease processes and that, uh, that sort of thing. So what I, I looked at for grad school was one, looking at how stem cells travel throughout the body to treat heart disease, and then also how cancer tumor cells spread throughout the, the body as well. And so currently I'm a cancer researcher and I'm looking at how specifically cells different are, are different from one another in tumor cells versus normal in tumor and how this um, process is affecting how people get and how tumor progresses in patients. But real quick, what I want to do before I, I start my talk, I want to give you some perspective on cells and how many cells there are in the body. So before I, I talk about that, I'm going to ask, so really quickly, so this is an image, so I think we're going to take a step back, a huge step back to the universe. So as you all are aware of, the universe encompasses everything that exists, and it houses many or multiple galaxies, several, several galaxies. For example, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is uh, one of these galaxies which houses our solar system. So real quick, I want to ask, so someone raise your hand and, and say how, or shout out, how many galaxies you think there are in the entire universe? And I'll give you a hint, it's a lot. All right. What was that? Infinite. That's a, that's a good question. Maybe. <laughs> you? 5,021. Very specific. I like it. Think even bigger, though. Much bigger. 7,000. That's good, but even bigger. I, said, I heard someone say trillion something. A trillion. Okay. That's close. That's very close. And so, one more. Two trillion. Ah, genius. Two trillion. So, it's, uh, so there's no way to specifically count every single galaxy in the universe, but it's estimated that there are approximately around two trillion. And just so you all can see, I wrote out the, uh, the actual number so you can see how big of a number that is. So that's, that's a lot of galaxies in the universe. But to put that into perspective, Again, raise your hand and shout out how many cells do you think are in the body? And again, it's a big man. Seven trillion? Three trillion? Okay. Seven trillion? Even bigger, you guys. Yeah? You, yes, you. Seventy trillion. Okay, that's that's too big, but that's that's close. <laughs> yeah. One octillion, okay, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> 65 trillion, okay, close, close. You in the back there, right there, yes, yes. What was that? Two trillion? More than that, all right, so I'll, I'll give you the answer. So it's 37 trillion. So a lot of you are very close. But, um, but I, I use this uh, example to show you all that there are more cells in your body than there are galaxies in the entire universe. I'll say that again, there are more cells in your body than there are galaxies in the entire universe. That's huge, that's amazing. I think that's so fascinating. It's almost like if you think about it, there's an entire universe that you have housed just in your body. That's amazing. 
And uh, the thing that I love about this is that there's so many different types of cells in the body. Of these 37 trillion, there are so many numerous different types of cells that create us as a whole, that do different functions that allow us to carry out whatever we're doing. So really quickly, what I want to do is, so I'm a cell biologist, and I want to focus for this talk, I'm going to talk about what we can learn from some of those 37 trillion cells in the body, and what life lessons could they possibly be wanting to teach us? Because if you think about it, cells have been around for a long, long time, and they've lived and they're optimized to do a job very well, and it's to succeed and to live and to help us account or achieve our, our life and our success. And they do this very well. And so after studying cells for a really long time, I've kind of condensed some of the things that I've learned about them, and I want to share them with you all today. And it's, um, or this, this video, I forgot to say what this was. This is a cell that was dividing or right before the division and the chromosomes or the DNA were separating right before it split into two cells. But so to back to some of the things that we can learn from cells, after uh, all of the cellular knowledge that we have, there are a few things that stand out that I think are really great for you all in your stage as students who are interested in the STEM fields to learn or to really get from, from cells. And one is identifying your strengths and your passions. So cells are really good at identifying what they're good at and then utilizing this to make sure that they're successful in their behavior. Two, honing and developing your skills. So cells are really good at turning into very specific cells that do a specific process. And then number three, which is my personal favorite, is embracing your uniqueness or your individuality. So like I just mentioned, there are tons of cells in your body. Each of them are very specific and are very unique. And so that's something that I think we can all take into account when we're thinking about how we're going to contribute to the greater society is how we can use our uniqueness to allow ourselves to contribute to all of humanity. So real quick, on the first one, identifying your strength. So, you know, we all know in our cells or in our bodies, we have cells. There are many strong cells. You know, we've got like muscle cells and something like that. But real quick, I want everyone to take your right hand and place it over your heart. Now, just for a second, just feel the beating of your heart, the rhythmic beating as it's pumping life throughout your body in the form of blood. And if you were to maybe open your chest, take a slice and look at your heart, it would look something like this, where it was uh, a beating or contracting uh, every few seconds and doing so in a very rhythmic way while it pumps blood throughout your body. And this is actually a, a very interesting process because the heart will beat or pump billions of times over the course of your life. And it's able to do this, one, because it is a, it's a very strong organ or it's a very strong muscle, but secondly, it's doing this because of uh, these specific cells known as cardiac muscle cells or cardiomyocytes. And these are the cells, these are some of the hardest working cells in the body. And they are the ones that are responsible for that contracting that you see or that you feel in your heart. And they're the ones that are responsible for allowing you to beat and beating those billions of times through your, um, your entire life. But the, the thing about this is that these cardiac cells, they are specialized to do this. One of their strengths is not only that they're strong and they're able to beat and contract, but they're strong at being able to do this specific process. And they've identified that they're good at this, so this allows them to beat and to pump the heart for the years and years or decades and decades that we're alive. And they do this extremely well and extremely efficiently. So I say this to, to kind of set the tone for looking at in life, when you have, when you're thinking about what you want to do in life, think of it in the context of what are you passionate about? What are your strengths? What are you good at? That's something that you want to really focus on because one, if you're able to do that, you'll be able to do what you're able to do very well, but you'll also be able to contribute to society in a way that you couldn't before if you were doing something that maybe you weren't as passionate or strong in. So for instance, uh, an example I like to use is we're all familiar with white blood cells. These are the cells that are responsible for our immune system, keep us healthy, and that sort of thing. But we would not want white blood cells to switch or swap places with cardiac cells and try to do the heart, uh, or the heart cells' jobs. One, 
they wouldn't do a very good job, and two, we would probably die, so we don't want that. <laughs> but, uh, but So keep that in mind when you're thinking about what you want to do in life or what areas you're interested in doing, whether it be science, math, engineering, technology, or even a different field. Think about what you're strong at and then how you can utilize that to contribute to the, the whole, the body, in a sense, in society. And thanks to genetics, everyone has talents. So you can't say that you don't have a strength or a talent. Or maybe I should say, uh, thanks, mom and dad. So uh, this is a, a video of an embryo right after fertilization. And so I showed this video to highlight the, the point that, so when your cells, so when your mom and your dad had you, their genetic components came together in a cell. And it allowed you to get a unique set of DNA from both of your parents. So what that means is that your strengths, your talents, are going to be unique to you. Now, there may be others that have similar interests or talents, but you're the only person in existence who has the specific combination of your talents and passions in the world. So you, like, knowing that is important, and knowing that is, is huge, because that means that once you figure that out, you can find out what specifically you want to do in the world, and you're going to be the best person to be able to do that. So the next one, or the next point that we can learn from says is honing or developing your skills. So say you've identified your strengths and your passions, and now you're thinking about uh, what's next. So this is a, an image of what's known as embryonic stem cells. So these are, so that video before, this is the stage, a few stages after that, where the cells have turned into um, somewhat different cells, but they're still able to uh, grow and create the body, eventually what we call the human body. And the beautiful thing about the stem cells is that they have the ability to, of course, divide, but they can change, or what's known as differentiate, into any cell that they want, or any cell in the body. And that's really what happens in humans when we're developing these cells will be the ones that are first in our body, but they'll change or they'll differentiate or change into another type that creates either our heart, our white blood cells, our brain, our mind, our skin. And so I like to use this analogy that you all are stem cells, especially students. Like you all have the ability to learn so much. You're young, you have the ability to choose whatever path or career you want to choose. You can use whatever strength that you've identified and then hone and develop that skill to be a very specialized uh, individual, which will allow you to carry out a multitude of whatever functions or different functions that you choose to want to accomplish. So that's something really important to remember is at this stage and even later in life, you have the ability to choose whatever you want to do. And that is, that's important because if you want to be a, a productive member of society, choosing something that you're passionate and you're strong in is something that all cells have to do and it's something that you all will do eventually uh, if you're not already doing it now. But it seems like if you're here, you're already interested in the, the science and technology and engineering fields, which is great. So that means that that's gonna be somewhere or some area that you're gonna contribute to as a specialized individual, which will help the whole. And then the last one, which I said was my personal favorite, is embracing your uniqueness in individuality. So this video is one bacterial cell that's dividing or growing over the course of several, several hours. And specifically, this is a bacteria known as E. coli. And E. coli, it's, it's a popular bacteria, and it's, uh, it grows very fast, and it's very common to be used in a lot of uh, research laboratories and um, science experiments. But, um, and you might be thinking, you know, I said bacteria, so this is, this is bad, or this is, uh, you know, maybe a not so good organism, but you might be surprised to learn that E. coli, although it is a bacteria, is found in the human body. And not only is it found in the human body, but it's a uh, integral part of our intestinal or gut uh, environment, and it actually helps with digestion and doing uh, several various processes in our gut. And so I say this to, to highlight the, the potential that you have cells. These are bacterial cells, not even human cells like us, they're completely different species, but they're necessary for us to function properly, specifically for our intestinal gut um, environment. And these are a different type of cell. So I say this to show you that 
to highlight the uh, in biology, there are instances where you'll have uniqueness, like a unique cell, a bacteria cell that's not even human, that's able to contribute to the human system and help it to do what it needs to do and actually survive and live better. So if you are maybe perhaps uh, interested in something that is completely different from everyone around you or something that you have never even maybe heard of or something like that, don't be discouraged just because it's different or just because it's unique or just because you haven't heard of it before because we need new uniqueness, not just in the body, but in society. And there's a place for uniqueness because it allows us to see things and do things in a different way. So if we, the uh, bodies in our cell and our, uh, or the cells in our body cannot do what the E. coli do. It's a specific function that's unique to them. So we actually need them, even though they're not human cells in our body to help us function properly. So always keep that in mind when you're thinking about what you wanna do or what you're interested in. Just because it's different or you might be unique or different from the, uh, the larger group, don't discount or discredit your ideas. And so lastly, I just want to take it back again to the, uh, the analogy of the, uh, the universe and the, the galaxies and just urge you all to remember that you all have, again, more, and I love saying this, so I keep repeating, you have more cells in your body than there are galaxies in the universe. And the, the beautiful thing about cells is that they have, they're all, you know, they're very different and they change into different cells, but they have one thing or a few things in common. And, but one thing is that their main purpose is to succeed and to help you be a successful person in your life and achieve whatever your goal is and have a successful life so that you can continue to make more cells through and through the generations. So you have a whole universe that's trying to help you accomplish whatever goal you are trying to achieve, whether it be science, technology, engineering, math, or anything in between. So remember that, and again, I'll go over the points that I, uh, I just talked about. So identify your strengths and your passions. So find you know, what you're strong at or what you're good at, what areas you're interested in developing, and then really uh, develop and hone those skills. Find out how you can be the best or the most um, uh, well-suited to do whatever it is that you want to do, and then make sure that that's what you're doing. And then again, like I always, like I said before, embrace your uniqueness and your individuality, because without unique or individual people, we will not be able to function as a society. If we all were the same, that wouldn't work. So be sure that you're always open to trying new things and doing different things. And one quote that I always like to uh, leave, especially young students with, is you have all the tools necessary to build whatever future you want. All you have to do is figure out how to use them. And if you all have any questions in the future after this is over, please feel free to send me an email at my, um, my email, tyler at tylerallen.com. And thank you all for listening to my talk. <laughs>